I'm going to be talking about um, actually a few questions that I've been getting through my social media account when it comes to the PPP and IDL. I know there's still a lot of confusion out there, and I think the reason behind that is because it's just it was a lot of things going on all once, right? Um, and I think what's happening is that. Uh, you know, as much information we get saturated, right, with all these articles and blogs and other videos that, that we see out there, sometimes we just need clarity from the right source. Hopefully you might agree with me on that one. So anyhow, if you don't know who I am and this is your first time really um, meeting me, by all means, my name is Liz Surya. I am a tax accountant and also a business advisor. Um, had my channel here on YouTube and a podcast for many years. And now uh, I'm going to jump in to answer some of those questions that I've been getting actually um, from um, some of my um, followers and subscribers through my social media accounts. I thought it was a lot easier because I think that these answers that I'm going to be providing uh, in this episode, they pretty much could be very valid, validated through the next couple of years. Um, because some of you, you might be fitting into um, these type of questions and sometimes you kind of wonder what is the right directions and what I should do. Like I always say, um, this is for informational purposes. So you always, always, uh, it's a smart decision to invest obviously with a, you know, a CPA, an accountant or a business attorney, someone that understands what the laws are and special guidance when it comes to these type of loans. Um, because there's a lot of restrictions and a lot of things that you just need to be a little bit careful as an entrepreneur, right? So I wanted to the most questions I could to answer in this video, but anyhow, I, as of this recording, um, currently the PPP has ended with $138 billion left over. Um, and I think the biggest concern that we're having right now is, oops, what happens if I run out of money? right? Uh, would I be able to apply again? And I think chances are going to be very good uh, for people who can prove um, that they have the need. Uh, and again, when I say the need, remember, it's not what you say verbally uh, to all these governments and loan officers. It's what you can prove on paper, right? And, uh, and, and again, as an accountant, I have to emphasize this so strongly because I know some of you are really small businesses and unfortunately, um, you know, you, you fall behind in your accounting, taking care of your reconciliation, your financial reports. And while most of you don't want to really care about that stuff, the reality is that we all have a responsibility to continue, you know, taking care of our books, whether you do it, whether it's a relative, it doesn't matter. But here's the thing with this Q&A that I'm going to answer. Um, and I said, these were people that I thought it was just easier to do this video. One of the questions that I got, it was because they came across this article that I'm actually sharing on screen with the PPP ended with $138 billion left over. By the way, it's, um, you can find the article. It was published through the Fox Businesses. Um, uh, and that is foxbusinesses.com, by the way, if you want to look at it. So there's a lot of fear with this and coming along with this question here is that they already almost exhausting. Um, I, I got my PPP. This is Ashley from North Carolina. And the question is, I got, um, a loan from PPP, um, but I'm running out of money. Um, and at this point, I don't know if I could apply for whatever, um, you know, funds are still remaining, um, from the leftover. Well, that's a great question, but at the same time, again, if you can show proof on your financial statements that that's the reality, um, and if you did exhaust all that, Ashley, then, you know, I would probably, uh, wonder what did you do with the remaining of the funds? Hopefully, if you use them as um, indicated, remember that the PPP will be forgiven as long as you can show proof. Yes, let me repeat that. Proof that you have actually used the money, uh, you know, in a, in a appropriate way as indicated through the guidelines of the, you know, the, the rulings of the PPP as it was established. So if you have exhausted the monies, um, I guess you're going to need to really prove that. I mean, like I said, in your financials, uh, what portion, right? 60%, which it was a revision that they made, uh, went to payroll. 
and then the other 40% you could use for you know paying your rent or perhaps mortgage right and other operating costs that you could have including health insurance right so if all that was exhausted so you know you know, I will contact your loan officer and see if there's an opportunity that you can probably actually um, get, uh, you know, an additional fund. Um, because if indeed there's a leftover, um, then you can prove that you need additional funds and that's the right information, then I really don't see a problem with that. But again, I'm not a loan officer, but I think it would definitely be a good um, approach, you know, to get back to your loan officer who approved, you know, your, your, your original PPP and see if you can reapply and maybe they can do something about that. Okay. Um, and then the other question that I got here was, uh, and this one comes from, uh, P Peter and he is actually in, uh, where? Illinois, Illinois. Okay, Peter. So question with Peter goes following. Liz, um, I'm a little bit concerned in regards to funds that I probably won't use completely uh, for the PPP. Um, I was granted uh, with over $223,000 um, on the PPP, um, but a lot of the employees that I had in the companies, uh, they prefer to <laughs> go with unemployment because they were for a law, right? Um, and when I requested them to come back, their unemployment checks were a large, you know, more than what I was paying to them. And what's going to happen with that remaining fund that it was not used? So this is the opposite of Ashley's question, right? Hers, she exhausted the funds. This one, I'm sure she, he has remaining, uh, you know, funds available. Well, in that case, you know, you know, Peter, at this point, I think the best thing you can do um, is that unfortunately, those employees that you furlough and you request them to come back and they kind of refuse, uh, we know this. Kind of a problem with that um now that the monies have been exhausted and we almost ending with the the 600s already over as it is as the recording of this uh you know episode um but this has been additional funding right through the fema but that's going to be over very soon too so um at this point maybe you still have a chance to rehire those people and uh use those funds that it was granted to you um if not the consequences of having any funds remaining as long as i'm not sure because here uh on on your question you didn't tell me exactly when you got approved but for some of you don't know before june the 5th of 2020 it was a two-year um term uh, meaning that that was the maturity of the loan meaning that you have to pay whatever remaining monies that you did not use uh, under the forgiveness, uh, you know, um, portion um, at 1%, okay, which anyhow was completely low. I can imagine anyone getting a loan, a business loan for 1%. I mean, it's, that's unbelievable. So if you have funds remaining, um, you know, uh, prior to those 24 weeks that's going to be exhausted, um, then that means that you will be responsible to pay 1% interest. And again, now, if you got your PPP approved after June the 5th, then uh, luckily you're gonna have five years to pay that at the same rate at 1%. So hopefully I did answer that question to the best of my ability and uh, to a lot of people who are, I think still kind of wondering uh, what's gonna happen, okay? So, um, and then uh, I'm gonna pick a third one here. And, and finally, this one, it's actually from the IDL. And, um, okay, so Sally, you know, your question is regarding your IDL. And what I, I'm able to comprehend is that it's asking here whether or not her IDL, um, she should be able um, to use that money for actually distributions in her company because she has an S Corp. Okay, now here's the, here's the issue with, when you have an S Corp and you've got an IDL. Um, it's almost 
mandatory that you actually pay yourself a payroll, okay? Um, and I know, yes, I get it. I mean, hey, if you pay a distribution, not only you don't pay self-employment taxes, right? Because that's part of the big, big, big benefit of having an S-Corp, even though you might be a limited liability company. Um, but the reality is that, uh, you know, you cannot just take draws as you probably more common knowing that terminology. You cannot pull distribution just because you want to avoid not paying yourself a payroll because you pay the payroll taxes, which is Social Security, Medicare, right, and the unemployment. So the fact is, if you're using that money um, and thinking, okay, I'm not going to pay myself payroll, I'm going to do distribution I, 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 that's no, no. I mean, it's just not, it's not going to work out. Um, because that's part of the reason why the IDL gave you that money. The same thing as the PPP. They don't want just people pulling draw money and distribution. Um, now it's different in the situation that, um, you know, if, if, if Sally would have been actually an LLC without being elected as an S corporation, then yes, you can take a distribution because remember, as you pull the money, you're being taxed later on, or as I always recommend strongly to all my uh, self-employed, you know, um, entrepreneurs out there is pay yourself quarterly your taxes. Don't wait until you have to file the yearly return because that's when you get hit with a tax bill and, you know, you get upset, but don't get upset because we know that here, the function of the U.S. system with taxes is that you need to, as you earn, you pay. So let me repeat that. As you earn, you pay taxes. So what happens is employees, W-2s, their employers keep debiting their, you know, payroll taxes, right? Um, but because we, we're self-employed, we have the luxury and technically to hold on to paying those payroll taxes for three months. But a lot of you, and I know you do this, it's a big, big mistake, and it really, really affects you very, very badly, is that when you do to file your return, you want to wait until last minute, uh, right as you get close to that deadline, and then you get hit with that bill. And on top of that, you can get hit with penalties and interest because those funds should have been paid to Uncle Sam in a quarterly basis, okay? Uh, well, usually when I work with my clients, I provide them with vouchers. And a lot of things that I do beyond tax preparation, which is the standard thing that you can do, is I do a lot of tax planning with my entrepreneurs because all of you need a lot of help when it comes to understanding not only to pay your taxes in advance, but what are you going to do to reduce that taxation and hopefully utilize that money for your business or maybe to invest in something else like my produce passive income, right? Whether you might be in uh, investing in real estate, uh, which is one of my niches and also e-commerce, right? A lot of people, um, you know, they have online businesses too besides their main business. So I always tell people have more than one income revenue of this, no doubt about that. <laughs> Cause you never will goes up, maybe another business could do better off season or on season. So again, that would be, you know, my answer, um, you know, Sally, is that, you know, definitely, uh, you know, do not pay yourself if you have an S corporation and just pull distribution because that could create a problem. Now, if you have extra funds in that business account that the ideal loan got deposited, that's different because you're using the funds that you already had or funds that you're generating uh, as a new income. But the portion that actually belongs to IDL, if you want to look at it that way, that portion be more cautious in how you use it. And one of my last tips I want to share here with you, all of you, it's really separate. Honestly, it doesn't cost anything. Just get a separate business checking account. And you might want to have those funds that you receive from IDL. And the same thing, by the way, PPL. This is what I mostly, I, I, I really um, suggest very strongly to all my clients and put that money in a separate account and just transfer funds whenever you need to do it for your payroll and other operating expenses, because that's going to be a lot easier for you to track the expenses, especially for the PPP, because you're going to need that forgiveness. Again, remember PPP, whatever monies you did not use for the forgiveness section, you will have to pay 1% you know, uh, interest. Again, it's very cheap. Um, so 
Let's hope that uh, this money there is remaining at uh, the, you know, the, the leftover of PPP. Hopefully some of you might be able to go back and re reapply. But again, um, I hope, uh, you know, on the next uh, Q&A that I'm planning to do, um, especially I'm just pre-selecting questions because sometimes I get bombarded with so many that it's, it's uh, you know, it's impossible for me to answer. But I hope that even these answer at the long term, uh, you know, again, if you're in that situation, at least you have a good idea. Again, information purposes, if you really need someone to really dig deep into, you know, your, 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 your loan and understand more how you have been spending those funds, it might be very, very reasonable that you make an investment and contract somebody, like I say, uh, you know, an, another accountant, if it's not me, or another CPA or, or a business attorney who is familiar with, with taxes and businesses, because this is going to really help you to do the right thing, you know? So any help, once again, I hope my information has been valuable to you. And if it has, as always, I ask, like, share, and comment, and subscribe. Um, as I come up with a weekly, um, you know, episode every single week. For some of you who don't have time to be watching these videos, uh, please remember that I do have a podcast and the same uh, audio that, you, that you'll be hearing here, it gets actually uh, connected to my podcast. Uh, whatever might be easier, then uh, you can connect with me. And I wish you the best. And like I said, uh, you know, just be cautious with the money is how you're, you know, utilizing those funds. And again, if you put the separate account, that's going to be very beneficial. Really, really is. Um, and again, with the idea, the $20 billion got exhausted. The money is gone. Um, I'm still being hearing some people saying that, you know, the loans officer are still reaching out to certain people. I'm really surprised about that. I guess that even though they say it's, it's really exhausted, I think there's still some money there left. Um, but um, again, like I said, just be smart um, and just follow the rules. That's it. As long as you follow, you've got nothing to fear. I mean, uh, you know, cover with the payroll. Um, my biggest concern, what I see right now, is as we're approaching the fourth quarter of 2020, is that, uh, you know, a, a lot of you are not going to have enough funds if you haven't been able to generate and recover because of COVID, um, of maybe having to furlough or even worse, lay off permanently some of your staff because your money will be running out from the PPP. So I hope that's not the case and things improve financially for all of you. And again, I will be seeing you in the next episode. You stay, take care of yourself and wishing you the best. Take care. Bye-bye.